Marley Liss wanted the man who assaulted her to be held accountable for what he did. She wanted to take him to take responsibility for the pain he caused. But when the criminal process became too much to bear, she started looking for a different solution. And she found her answer in the process called restorative justice and then came face to face with her assailant to try and help and heal. Well, now she wants other sexual assault survivors to know the traditional justice system is not their only right or option. Marley is here this morning to share her story. Welcome to your morning. Thank you. Um, first of all, you described going through the court process almost as bad as the assault itself. Uh, describe what that process was like, what made it so difficult, mm -hmm. and what it was like when you came face to face once again with the man who had attacked you. Yeah, so the trial was a really awful experience. Like, I just found that the punitive process was the most, like, the least consensual process, ironically. Mm. Um, such a disempowering experience to sit on the stand, to be like drilled with questions that are so invasive and personal to me, um, and to be met with disbelief. Um, my assailant was like looking down at the ground the whole time. We never got to have an interaction. I never got to ask the questions I'd always wanted to ask or get closure or accountability. So actually meeting with this person, we sat in an eight hour mediation circle just a few months ago, um, I was able to get closure. I was able to get an apology. My mom was there. She was able to get closure, accountability. So it was immensely healing, huge contrast to the court system. Um, you described it as empowering. What part of that process for you gave you back power? Yeah, the whole process of restorative justice, every moment felt like an opportunity for reclamation. Um, where I felt my voice was so stripped away in the court process, this was the opposite. I was constantly asked, like, what will be most healing for you? What do you want to focus on? And then I got to speak. I got to speak. I got to have my grief witnessed. I asked for, like, this person to look me in the eye and really witness the pain I had gone through. Did you believe him when he apologized? I did. Like, I feel like that moment was like way more healing than I knew I needed. Like mm. just, I instantly burst into tears and it was like such a huge relief. Just hearing that ownership was huge. Uh, charges against him were dropped. Uh, this is never going to go to trial. He will not be named. There are some people who feel that this version of justice is not real justice, that people will not change mm -hmm. without punishment. Uh, what do you say to those who say that uh, it could even be a danger to send him back out without yeah. him being named. I have so much to say around that, and this is why like, I founded a foundation called Rehumanize focused on educating people on restorative justice, because yeah. I think the fact that we've equated justice to punishment is a huge disservice to us, and I'd really like to make justice synonymous with healing. Um, so to me, like, my rapist experienced extensive therapy, consent, education, unlearning the patriarchy so, so, so much. And I experienced him transform. Like, not only do I feel very reassured he won't do this again, but I actually feel quite confident that he might use this to make change in his life in the same way that I have. Uh, Marley, a question I have is, you are part of this process, obviously, but who makes the final decision that this is the way, that this is, uh, that he's had his punishment, that he will not be named, and that this is the final conclusion. Who makes that yeah. final decision? So this is a beautiful aspect of restorative justice. It really looks towards the survivor. So the Crown Attorney looked towards me after the circle and said, are you satisfied? And I said, more than satisfied. Um, and she said, OK, and that's why we dropped the charges, and that's it. Um, in your response, again, to people who would say that this is somebody who had committed a crime, uh, has been excused of their crime, and is back out in the public again. And there are people who will be concerned about mm -hmm. that, who will be worried about that. Yeah, I think that this actually enhances public safety. Um, I think that there's so many statistics that show that incarceration leads to recidivism, more violence, reoffense. I really believe that my rapist is way more likely to be like a good and safe citizen after this experience of like education and rehabilitation. Um, rather than if he was incarcerated. I really believe that. I don't think that's the case for every single survivor or abuser, but I think that 
restorative justice places incarceration rightfully as a last resort. Yeah, and your organization that you talked about, Rehumanize, wants to make sure that uh, all victims know that it is their right to this option as well, that there's more than one course of action to take. Exactly. I don't think it's the right option for everyone, but I think that we have a right to know that it exists and that it should be way more accessible. Marley, I am fascinated to hear not only about your story, but more about restorative justice. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. If you would like to find out more about Rehumanize, you'll find a link to that on our website, yourmorning.ca. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.